Hello friends and welcome to Miss Debbie's Storybook STEM class. I'm so happy you're here to join me. We are going to read a book and then we're going to have a STEM challenge at the end. But before we do that, Miss Debbie would love to start off with a hello song. So join me. Here goes. It's time to wave our hands and say hello, hello. It's time to wave our hands and say hello, hello. I'm so happy that you are here. Are you ready to have some fun? Let's smile and wave our hands and say hello, hello. Every storybook STEM class starts off with a story. Today's story is a fairy tale, and that means that it didn't really happen. The name of our story is Jack and the Beanstalk. Jack and the Beanstalk in this book is illustrated by Giuseppe Delernia, Jack and the Beanstalk. Once upon a time, a boy named Jack lived with his mother in a little cottage. They were very poor and they only had the milk from their cow to drink. One day, the cow stopped giving milk. We need money for food, said Jack's mother. Take our cow to the market and sell her. Jack doesn't look too happy about having to sell his cow. Jack set off to the market, and on the way, he met an old man who wanted to buy the cow. Well, that was quick. I will pay you with these magic beans, said the man. They will grow up to the sky. Okay, said Jack. He took the beans and gave the cow to the man. Uh-oh. Do you think Jack's mom's going to be happy that he got magic beans instead of gold coins? When Jack's mother found out what he had done, she was very upset. You sold our cow for a handful of beans, she cried. She flung them out the window. That night, Jack fell asleep, feeling very unhappy. And outside, the rain fell on the enchanted beans. The next morning, Jack saw that an, an enormous beanstalk had grown where the beans had fallen. Wow! Jack dashed outside. The towering beanstalk stretched up through the clouds. Where does it go, he wondered. Do you think Jack's going to find out where it goes? Let's see. Without giving it a second thought, Jack started to climb the beanstalk. He climbed higher and higher until the cottage was very far below. Above the clouds, Jack found a gigantic castle. He tiptoed into the dining room. I wonder who lives here, he whispered. There on a huge table was a big bag of shiny gold coins. Suddenly, the ground began to shake. Jack heard heavy footsteps. Thump, thump, thump. Jack ran and hid under the table. An enormous giant appeared. He twitched his nose and he sniffed. <laughs> Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead. I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Yikes. Look at how scared Jack is. The giant looked around, but he couldn't see Jack. He sat down and he gobbled up all of his food, and soon he fell fast asleep. Jack crept out from his hiding place. He grabbed the big bag of gold coins and he ran. Before long, he was climbing back down the beanstalk. Wow, Jack. Jack and his mother were rich, but they spent too much and soon the gold coins ran out. So Jack climbed back up the beanstalk to the castle again. 
Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman, said the giant, as he stroked a hen that laid eggs of gold. Golden eggs? Have you ever seen such a thing? Just as before, the giant could not find Jack. So he gobbled up his food, and again he fell fast asleep. Jack grabbed the hen and climbed back down the beanstalk. Wow, Jack's getting lucky. The gold eggs made Jack and his mother rich again. But Jack wanted more. Oh no, Jack. He climbed back up the beanstalk to the castle. Jack found the giant dozing while a golden harp played sweet music. Fee fi fo fum, muttered the giant in his sleep. Jack snatched the golden harp, but it shrieked, Master, Master! The giant leapt up from the table, and he chased Jack all the way to the beanstalk. Yikes, Jack! But this time when Jack got to the beanstalk, the giant had a plan that Jack did not know about. The giant wrapped the beanstalk with barbed wire. That hurts when you touch it. So it would be very dangerous for Jack to climb down the beanstalk. He would get hurt. Oh boy, Jack has a problem. And we're here to help him solve that problem. This is our STEM challenge. We have to engineer, design a way to help Jack get down from the beanstalk and escape the giant without hurting himself. <gasps> see. What could Jack do? He doesn't have anything to help him get down. If he jumps, gravity will pull him right down to the ground very fast and he will definitely hurt himself. Did you hear that word? Did you hear the word Miss Dippy said? Gravity? That is our scientific word of the day, gravity. Miss Debbie would like you to stand up and on the count of three, Miss Debbie would like you to say the word gravity as loud as you can and jump up at the same time. Are we ready? One, two, three, gravity. Very good. So gravity is our scientific word of the day. Now, gravity means that there is an invisible force all around us that pulls everything down to earth, down to the ground. We can't see gravity, but we can definitely see gravity in action. Take this ball, for instance. If Miss Debbie lets go of this ball, do you think it's going to go fly up into the sky or fall down to the ground? Let's try it. It fell down to the ground. Why didn't it fly up into the sky? Let me try throwing it up to the sky and see if it stays up there. It came back down again. That is gravity. Gravity pulls everything down to the earth. Now what about a piece of paper? Miss Debbie's gonna throw this piece of paper up and see what happens. It floats down to the ground. Now's your chance to take five seconds to see if there's anything around you that's safe enough to toss up and not break when it lands and see if you can see gravity in action. Go ahead, try out something. There you go, that's gravity in action. Anything that goes up comes back down again because of gravity. So Jack is going to come down really fast because of gravity. We have to think of a way to make Jack go down very slow and safely. Hmm, can you think of anything that would let Jack come down slowly and stop or slow down gravity? Hmm. I have an idea. What about a parachute? You see people with parachutes and they're floating through the sky, almost like a kite. A parachute 
has a little pocket on the top that will trap some air in there because air is all around us. That's invisible too, just like the force of gravity. So if we make a parachute, it will slow down gravity and it will create a drag or something called air resistance. And that slows down the force of gravity so Jack can get down from the castle and safely back to his cottage and hopefully Jack will never climb up that beanstalk again. Are you ready to help Jack? Perfect. Now Miss Debbie has sent out a list of supplies to all of you so that you can gather your supplies and get them ready now. If you don't have that list of supplies, feel free to watch the video and then you can go back and watch it again once you know what you're going to need. Now in that list of supplies, Miss Debbie has included a plastic bag, just a plastic shopping bag, grocery bag here. If you don't have a plastic bag and you have a coffee filter or a tissue, that would work just as well. You're also going to need a cup. Miss Debbie chose a styrofoam cup because it's a little bit lighter. But if you don't have a styrofoam cup, any cup that you can poke a hole into will do. You are also going to need some yarn or some string and they have to be the same length. I suggested about 12 inches in length. So if you have a ruler, it's exactly the length of a ruler. If not, just estimate, make it look something like this, but you make sure that they're all the same size. We are also going to need some tape, a pair of scissors, and a pencil or a pen to help make some holes in our cup. Okay, here we go. Before we get started, Miss Debbie wants to show you the finished parachute with Jack inside. This is what it's going to look like when we're done, if you use a plastic bag. If not, it will look exactly the same on the bottom. You're just going to have a different top that's going to trap the air. Okay, there are two different ways that we can make this parachute. If you don't have tape, we are going to, going to go ahead and design our cup using our, let me start that again. If you don't have tape, we are going to design our parachute using a pencil and a styrofoam or paper cup. And what you're going to need to do is make four holes. Each hole should be across from the other one. So Miss Debbie is just gently going to poke her pencil into the side of her cup here. If you're using a pen or something that's really sharp, please get the help from an adult or a brother or sister so that no one gets hurt. So you're going to turn the cup around now and poke in a hole on the other side. Slowly and gently so you don't break your cup. There we go. Now I'm going to poke a hole on this side and another one on the other side. Perfect. Now this design is if you don't have tape because what you're going to do is you're going to lie your yarn or your string across the hole and use your pencil or your pen to push it through and grab it on the other end. Then what you can do is simply have someone help you tie a knot or if you're really good at tying knots yourself, just tie a knot on the side of the cup, just like that. Then what you're going to do is you are going to, if you're using a plastic bag, you are going to cut the handles off your plastic bag using a pair of scissors. If you're not very good at cutting yet, ask someone to help you with that step. Now we have a plastic bag with an opening on the bottom and the top is not open. We need the top to be closed so it can trap the air in and the air won't escape. Now, this is where our pencil comes in again. We're gonna do the same thing we did with our cup. We are going to poke one right here four holes, each one across from the other. One right here. Now I'm going to do on this side, poke a hole in, and flip it over here, and poke a hole in. Now you're going to do the same thing. You're gonna find the hole. 
Miss Debbie can do it without her pencil this time. And make it tie a knot. Tie a knot like that so that you can connect your paper bag to your cup. Now you're going to repeat that for all four holes. When you are done, Miss Debbie has included a printable of a picture of Jack that you can cut out and tape onto your cup and pretend that Jack is flying down through the sky in his parachute. Now the other way of doing this parachute is to use tape. This is an easier version, but if you don't have tape, Miss Debbie wanted to show you the first one. But instead of making the holes with your pencil in the cup and in the bag, all you're going to do is take another one of your strings, put it across from the other one, and just put a piece of tape in there to hold it down. Make sure you hold it tightly and secure it firmly so that it doesn't come apart when you're testing your parachute. Then I'm going to take this and I am going to attach it to the other side of my bag using tape as well. I'm just gonna tape it on right here. Just like that. Now if you were going to be using a coffee filter or a tissue paper, the same thing. You can tape it onto four sides, just like so, or you can poke a hole into four sides and make a knot and tie, tie it and make a knot and secure your string to your coffee filter. Now comes the fun part. This is our challenge to see if our parachute floats down slowly enough to bring Jack to safety. Now this is where you're going to need the help of an adult. Miss Debbie doesn't want anybody doing anything dangerous or getting hurt. But you're going to need to find a spot that's a little bit high so that you can give your parachute a chance to float down to the sky, float down through the sky. So if you're outside and you have a jungle gym that you can climb up on and safely stand on something and drop it down, that would be great. If you have a staircase in your house and you can hold on to something tightly and drop it down and see it float, that would be perfect as well. Or with the help from an adult, you can stand on a chair and let your parachute go and see if you're able to slowly bring Jack to help. Now, you can do an extension of this at home. You can try many different materials and see if there's other things that you can use for a parachute besides a plastic bag or a coffee filter. And maybe you can try attaching it with different things like a pipe cleaner or anything that you can come up with. So I hope you had fun with that challenge. Thank you so much for helping me save Jack. And Miss Debbie will be back in just a moment with some more activities. For our next activity, we are going to try to grow a beanstalk of our own. Now this beanstalk is never going to be as high as Jack's beanstalk. Because remember, that's a fairy tale and those things really don't happen. But for fun, we can try to grow a little beanstalk of our own. What we are going to need for this is a cup, a paper cup or a plastic cup, anything that you can puncture a little hole in the bottom of. Miss Debbie has a paper cup here too, a bigger paper cup, a smaller paper cup. And then you're also going to need a bowl of some sort to put underneath the paper cup because you're going to be watering this every couple of days to make sure the soil is moist and you don't want the water to spill everywhere. You're also going to need some soil. Miss Debbie has some potting soil here that I got from the local hardware store. And what you're going to do is just simply fill your cup up with some potting soil and then you are going to need some beans. Miss Debbie has some dry lima beans here that I got from the grocery store. You might have a different kind of dry bean in your cupboard. You could use that as well and see how that works. But all you're going to do is keep them dry, put some soil in your cup, drop a few, whoops, drop a few beans into your cup, and then you're gonna cover those beans with some more, more potting soil. 
Then you're going to poke a little hole into the bottom of your cup with your pen or pencil. That way when you water your bean, the water can drain and it won't get all sticky and stinky and moldy in here. That's gonna take about a week. It took about a week for Miss Debbie's little bean to sprout here. Now I'm gonna water it every couple of days so it doesn't get too wet, but enough to keep it growing and put it in some sunlight if you can. So I hope you're able to grow a little tiny beanstalk to have your very own. The next activity is a printable that I have included and the game is called More or Less and this is a math activity. This is the printable that I included. You're also going to need a die or some playing cards. Miss Debbie has some playing cards today, but if you have a die, you can roll that out and get a number as well. So to start off, player number one is going to flip over a card and look at the number. Miss Debbie has a 10 here. So what I am going to do is I can either count out 10 beans and put them down on the table, or I can write the number 10 on my paper, or I can make 10 little tally marks on my paper. Player two gets their turn. They're gonna flip a card. Close, nine. So player two got the number nine. They're gonna do the same thing. You can either count out nine lima beans or any other thing that you have around that you could count or draw the number nine or make nine tally marks on your paper. Now comes the fun part. We're going to figure out which number has more and which number has less. So you're gonna look at them and see which one has more. Which one's more, nine or 10? 10, that's right. So that one has more and nine has less. So you're gonna continue that game until you get to the very bottom. This game has one, two, three, four, five squares. So that's five turns that you get to take with your partner. Now, if you don't have someone else to play with, you can compete against yourself and have fun comparing numbers to see which one is more and which one is less. Well, we've come to the end of our lesson. Miss Debbie had so much fun with you. I hope you had fun learning about gravity and helping Jack escape the giant. Now is time for our goodbye song. Here goes. It's time to wave our hands and say goodbye. Goodbye. It's time to wave our hands and say goodbye. Goodbye. We've had lots of fun, my friends, and we'll do it all again. It's time to wave our hands and say goodbye. Goodbye, friends. Until I see you again next week, stay happy and healthy. Bye.